Welcome back to class. I'd like to make a short video here and show you what I do to try to get a little bit more of a professional look out of my videos uh, that I do for this class, that I do for other purposes. It, it is important uh, to consider the artistic and technical aspects of making videos. Uh, it's really dull to get on YouTube and have somebody talking to you just using their webcam and it's from their laptop computer and here's just this big close-up of their face talking at you and uh, the, you know it's kind of I don't know just not a real in interesting image to look at often uh, here we've got PowerPoint slides that I can uh, work in pretty easily just you know my laptop is plugged into the TV with the HDMI cable and so we have a nice, you know, PowerPoint background to go along. Uh, not hard to do that, and you may already have this stuff. Do you need an HDMI cable? Uh, Goodwill is my favorite place to find equipment for doing videography. I get all kinds of cables there. I usually keep an eye out for them and make sure I have some extras, extras around. I have a nice 20-foot uh, HDMI cable here that goes back to the TV, a little shorter than that. Bought it online at Amazon. I have another 15-foot extension for it as well. Uh, so these cables aren't that expensive to hook up stuff like this and, and have some kind of background like that. Let's get back to the slides here. How to make a home video. Uh, when I say home video, a professional quality uh, YouTube style internet video like we've got going here. First thing is what we call the rule of thirds. How do you aim that camera? How close do you zoom in and zoom out? I like this shot here, a little bit above my waist to just above my head. It's called a waist shot in the uh, TV lingo. And uh, it's actually, it approximates the distance uh, of you talking to somebody that, oh, you don't know that well, you just met them, you're having, you have something to talk about and you're talking. Maybe somebody at the store there at one side of the counter telling you about the product and you're on the other side. This is basically what your eyes see. They see wider than they see high. Uh, I've got a widescreen here. Uh, the standard is 4x3. Um, I think this is a 9x12 then that we're using here for, um, no, that'd be 4x3, wouldn't it? Um, I can never remember those numbers. Uh, if you're a videographer, you know those numbers. This is widescreen. Uh, I use widescreen for the screen behind me, and uh, I used to use uh, the standard screen, 4x3, uh, but we've moved on from that. All right, so the rule of thirds. Uh, divide your screen into a tic-tac-toe board like this. doesn't matter if it's a 4x3 aspect ratio, or if it's the wider aspect ratio, and there's even a movie screen with aspect ratio that's even wider now that I suppose some newer cameras will do, uh, the rule of thirds works the same. You make equally spaced nine boxes on that screen in your imagination, and you put your subject's eyes right on the cross points or right on one of the uh, in this case the upper line. So my eyes should be right about at that one-third line and if I get in this position here I'm not really blocking the screen behind me and my eyes are also right on that, um, that cross place there, you know, just above the couple's head or the other one. It doesn't matter which you use. I want to tend to look this way perhaps if I'm on that side of the screen. You don't want to be on this side of the screen and, and looking out this direction. Uh, I want to keep eye contact right on that camera, and then I want that camera to have my eyes right on the cross marks on the rule of thirds divisions. Put interesting things right on those uh, vertical lines or on the horizontal lines. I love taking pictures of nature, of landscapes, and I always put the edge of the mountains where it meets the sky at that top one-third line, and there's usually something interesting in the foreground that I can put on that lower one-third line and then uh, look for something else, a tree or something to put on one of the, the right or the left hand uh, vertical lines uh, to have a well-framed image. Uh, we teach this in photography, we teach it in videography. I'm teaching it to you here and that's probably, if you know that much, you're going to be a better photographer than almost anybody you know. All right. 
the sound and volume. Uh, you don't need to buy a microphone. I'm talking to the camera here. I've got a cheap camera. It's a Sony Handycam. I paid $60 for it at the pawn shop eight years ago. And it still works fine and does its, its HD and uh, I have no reason to get a new fancy better camera. This is probably a better image. I like it better than with my um, iPhone. Uh, though the iPhone images are getting a little better and better, but this one's got bigger lenses, so it gets a nice crisp image. Uh, yeah, 60 bucks for this camera. Maybe they're even cheaper now. I don't know. Brand new video cameras online. You don't need a $1,500 camera, a $2,500 camera to do very nice video work. Uh, you need to know how to use that camera. Okay, so for sound and volume, I'm talking to the camera. Its onboard microphone picks up everything just fine. If I wanted to have a fancy microphone here in front of me or hold something in my hand while I talked, uh, I could plug it right into that. I could plug it through a little cheap soundboard if I wanted. Probably 30, 40 bucks online and you can get a, a four channel little soundboard that lets you change your, uh, your bass, your mid-range and your treble tones and lets you blend volumes from your background music that you've got going while you talk into your microphone. Uh, yeah, you can get as complicated with this as you want, but I like to keep things simple. All right, so the, volume, the audio input is there if you want to use a microphone. I don't use it. I just make sure I have a quiet room with good resonance in it, and I use a nice strong voice when I talk to the camera. Backgrounds. Um, I like this fellow here. I watch his videos on YouTube. Uh, he reacts to... Uh, various kinds of music, and he's a good music analyst. He also reacts to some movie scenes uh, in movies. And I, when I can't sleep, I like to watch things like that. Uh, but he's got an interesting background there. It looks like album covers uh, for doing his music reviews. And uh, he's got them out of focus with his camera. The camera's focused on him. It's got a short focal length there. So he's in focus, and the background is out of focus, and that just works kind of nicely. There's something in the background, you can't quite tell what it is, uh, but it's good. I've seen other people with YouTube channels. I'd like to listen to one guy that talks about the Arizona Cardinals, and he went and bought one of those pieces of paneling from Home Depot that looks like uh, wood boards nailed up on the wall. And he put that on the wall behind him, and uh, you know, it looks great. And there's a couple other patterns for paneling there at Home Depot or Lowe's that you can get to put up on a wall if you'll want to go that far. I've done videos outside at my house in Flagstaff with the, the forest behind me in the backyard uh, and makes for a great background. Keep that focal length a little shorter. I don't worry about it with my camera, but the trees are just slightly out of focus back there and I'm what the camera's focusing on. So have some kind of background. A white wall just washes out your skin color and uh, just doesn't look good. Do something for background, even if you just hang a, a colored sheet on the wall behind you with thumbtacks. And you can fill in the holes with um, toothpaste is one trick I've heard, or just get a little squeeze tube of Alex Plus, take off the cap and uh, fill in the little pin holes with that. And you don't get the dorm people mad, right? Okay, normally I sit down, I've got this uh, office chair that I like to sit in. Uh, but stand up to do your speeches. I need you to stand up because I want to see if you're keeping your feet, feet still, if you're using good posture. Are you standing up straight or are you rocking back and forth from left to right on your feet because you're nervous and you don't even know you're doing it? Uh, stand up so we can see all that. Sitting down, you're not going to rock, but you're going to do proper what I'm doing, swiveling around a lot. I really ought to be still, don't you think? Maybe I just got a B for this video. All right, lighting. You need extra lighting when you do video, even if you've got a really good camera. Uh, actually, the iPhones do a pretty good job of adjusting for that, but even they respond well to a little bit of extra lighting. We use a system in uh, the video world called three-point lighting, and you have what's called a key light. I've got one right up here, um, and it's about four feet from my face, and it's, you can see the shadow there, it's providing the main light. I've got a fill light, and it's over here. It's kind of shining away from me, but it's, uh, you know, putting light on this side of my face. 
And then I've got a backlight. Uh, it's really the window behind me above the painting that you see from my background. And it's letting in a little light that's coming in on the top of my shoulders, on the back of my head maybe, so you can... Uh, uh, I don't just blend into the background that way with that backlight. And um, you can look at the little diagram there, and there's uh, set up in a formal movie studio, uh, or a TV photography studio, uh, a woman on a chair. It's a key light, a fill light, and you can see the backlight shining out at us. Uh, let me take a quick walk back to my camera, and I'm going to aim it at my little studio area here in my living room. So you can see exactly the high quality equipment I have spent a lot of money on to have to do my flash videos. Okay, first of all, uh, there's my key light. It's, it's just a lamp. There's a window behind me bringing a little light in the room. There's that back light that I've got, the upper window above the TV screen and the painting where I um, sit down. And there's my fill light, a little cheap clamp on light like you might have in your bedroom. I clamped it onto a painting and just have it sitting there on the couch. Um, I've also in this room, remember all the light you can get is good. I have some track lights up on the ceiling and they're aimed around. They're bouncing off the walls giving us some good light. One of them's aimed right up there above the window and you can see that light. It bounces off and provides some backlighting. I uh, got some more track lights over here. Now these uh, came with the house, of course. Got this light, but I've got them all turned on. And I've got nice bright light bulbs in all of these. And uh, have just a very basic TV studio here, right in my living room. That takes me about 30 minutes to set up when I want to record some videos. Walk back around to my chair, and here we are. And not professional, but it doesn't scream amateur either. All right, uh, the heat temperature of your lighting, uh, kind of a technical thing, but you do need to know there's two kinds of light bulbs. You know this already. Fluorescent light bulbs, the tubes, or even now we've got little curled fluorescent light bulbs that screw into your lamps. And then there's uh, what are called incandescent light bulbs, the older style that have the little filament in them that breaks. And the incandescent light bulbs provide a warm reddish to yellowish light on you. Uh, it tends to make your uh, skin perhaps look a little more reddish than it really is, uh, regardless of your skin color. Uh, the fluorescent lighting might tend to wash out your skin color. It just depends. Uh, experiment with different bulbs. You can go to a Habitat Restore in Flagstaff, there's one in Prescott, there's, they're down in Phoenix, uh, they're in most medium sized to, to larger cities. You can buy all the light bulbs you want and try all kinds of tricks for your home uh, YouTube video studio. And, uh, you know, I like to use the key light uh, is an incandescent and my fill light is uh, fluorescent over there. And my backlighting is going to be natural light coming through that window and a little bit of incandescent light bouncing off the walls. All right, uh, be sure you're happy with the color of your skin tone on your videos. And to change that, uh, change the kind of light bulbs you've got, adjust the distances until it looks the way you want. All right, we're just putting a little thought into all this is all. And, you know, there's nothing really complicated here. Uh, but if you just stand in front of your video, your, your computer, and use a little webcam there, it's not going to be a really good image. It's not a good lens. It's a cheap little camera. Really just good for basically showing a face um, up close. And uh, the angle of the camera is often wrong, and you don't put your body in this frame right. And we need to think about these things. You know, a lot of people are doing job interviews over Zoom now. And think about your background a little bit. Uh, even with the webcam in your laptop or your uh, tablet, uh, and when you set that thing up to go on Zoom, uh, what's behind you? How's the lighting in the room? Uh, take a little care for this. And maybe in your office area at home, uh, get a couple of lamps from the secondhand store and set them up with the right kind of light bulbs. So you can just turn things on and you're on Zoom and you're looking good. And you know how easy people are persuaded, you know, 
just you might get the job because you have extra lighting on you during the Zoom interviews. And they did four Zoom interviews, and, you know, and the, and the committee just said, you know, there's something about that one person you just liked. And everybody agrees. And maybe all it was was they did a little bit of this professional level thought into their uh, videography with uh, their Zoom a webcam on the laptop and a couple of extra lamps in the room and a nice background behind them. Sometimes that's all it takes. All right, editing your video. You don't need to edit the videos for this class. You can upload them. I put some links on one of the web pages. Uh, YouTube's a great place for it. Uh, Vimeo is a nice web hosting server. Uh, Viddler is another website and I think they all let you set up free sites. You don't have to pay and you can put a certain amount of videography on there and you're probably not going to use it up, not for this class. Uh, you'd have to really get serious into videography to use up the free space and have to start paying for it. Uh, so I go with YouTube because it's pretty darn dependable. They give me all the space I want. I've got 225 class videos on YouTube like this and uh, it's stable. We haven't lost any of them. So I trust YouTube for that. YouTube also uh, gives you some basic editing tools. If, if you don't have video editing software, that's okay. Uh, if you do, if you've got something on your computer, you can do the editing with that, but just trim off the front and the back. And so when I started this video, I uh, turned on the camera, I walked around, I sat down in the chair, I got still for five seconds, and then I started talking. When I'm done, I'll be still for five seconds after I say goodbye. I'll get up, I'll go around, turn off the camera. I'll upload it into YouTube, and then I will press edit with, on the YouTube button, and it'll open it up, and then I can trim. It's called the trim tool. Trim off the front 10 seconds and trim off the back 12 seconds to where I'm just looking at the camera and start talking immediately, and then I say goodbye, and it cuts off. And uh, then I let YouTube process the video. That takes a while, usually uh, four times the amount of time the video is long. Uh, and uh, I let YouTube do the rest, and then it's live. And uh, once you set it there, or you put it on any web server like that uh, for your class speech videos, then you can just send me the URL. And I can watch your video, and the whole class can watch your video. I still need to set all that up for you, and we'll work our way through that as we get there. Okay, the editing software is fabulous. You can do anything with that. You can even change it, the color of your face and your skin tone and all that with lighting, but um, we don't need to do that. I'm concerned about your speaking skills. All right, I think that covers about everything we want to look at. I uh, hope this helps, but let's just call this... Um, your short class in learning how to do more professional video work. And if you do just as much as we've talked about today, your stuff online is going to look um, way better than somebody that's uh, an amateur at it and hasn't been doing this for a while. And the world out there really does expect it. Uh, but on Zoom, where people aren't doing this, you're, you're going to look great on Zoom. Okay, thanks for watching, and I uh, hope this isn't too complicated. It really is easy. There are videos on how to do all of the video editing on YouTube, and you find them right on YouTube. So even that complicated part isn't that difficult to learn how to do. And again, I'm not requiring that. If you just record this on your camera and you upload it and give me a URL from wherever you've got it, uh, that'll get us through the class. Have a great day.